Hey everyone, Brian here from Exact IT Solutions. Welcome to uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020. Uh, today is October 6, 2020, and I'm coming at you today with a video that we're going to do a little bit of deep dive and look at some statistics on ransomware. Uh, there's two reports that were released recently, one by IBM and the other one uh, by Checkpoint Software. Uh, that, that goes into a little bit of, about uh, ransomware, it looks at some data, um, and it, there were some really interesting findings, and I'm going to go through that with you today. Uh, the, the goal here is that we can learn from these things, we can learn from the attacks, we can learn uh, how to better protect our organizations from these criminal threats that are out there. And um, there's some interesting data, so we're gonna get into it, but before we get into it, uh, if you're entertained or you're, uh, you learn anything in these videos, I ask you to please hit the like button. It helps us out with Google and, uh, and YouTube. And uh, if you uh, are so inclined, please subscribe to our channel. We put videos out regularly around cybersecurity and technology. Uh, and you hitting that subscribe button really helps us out and motivates us to, motivates us to put out more uh, good content like this. So without further ado, let's get into the details of the reports. So as you can see, ransomware 2020 attacks trend, uh, trends of affecting organizations. This was a report put out by IBM, um, and uh, it looks at various uh, ransomware uh, variants that are out there. Um, it looks at the most notable ones, the ones that are causing the most damage. And as you'll see, we're going to take a look at the people or persons or organizations that are behind these and how um, how these uh, ransomware uh, variants and malware actually get onto systems or once they're on there, what we're seeing as common trends uh, with these criminal groups and what they're doing. Uh, we'll look at things like how much they're asking for in terms of ransomware and we'll look at the frequency of attacks. and. You know who's winning the ransomware game who's who's putting the most ransomware out there on the systems and who's successfully getting this done and how are they doing it that's what a lot of these studies look at and i'm going to go through that and bring that to you at a very high level here in this video uh, so as you can see um june 2020 and february 2020 and even may 2020 and I'm going to go out on a limb here, and based on the attacks that we saw last month in September, even though that that, that data isn't on this screen right now, um, you know, June, May, February of 2020 were the three biggest months. But overall, um, we saw attacks increase tremendously in June. Um, you know, we had a lot of things going on in June, and uh, you know, COVID was one of them. The decentralization of people's networks um, and working from home um, not to say that that was a, the exact cause of all this stuff but we did see a huge spike in june um, may was also another big spike compared to the rest of the month and then uh, you know and then we're seeing july hasn't really tempered down to april or march's numbers and august is staying up there and i'm going to venture to say that september is going to be if not on par with June, right there behind it. Definitely higher than than July and August based on all the attacks we saw, especially uh, in that last weekend there uh, of, uh, of, of the month where we saw a number of hospitals and a number of school districts and a lot of organizations uh, get attacked. Um, so the, uh, the most prevalent uh, ransomware strain that we're seeing uh, is by the Revel uh, criminal group. Um, and they are the ones that um, are, are linked to organized crime in Russia. Um, and they also own what's known as the Sodi Nokibi no 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 uh, ransomware. Um, a variant strain. It was seen in almost 30% of the attacks investigated in 2020, according to IBM. Um, and Rebel claims of more than 140 victims uh, in wholesale, manufacturing, and professional services. Those were the top three 
uh, industries that were attacked by this group. Uh, most of them were in the United States and, um, and, and the company estimates that 36% of them paid the ransom demand. Um, and Rebel, you know, I hear this all the time from companies and I wanna make it a point in this video to highlight it again. You're never too small. And what we learned from this report and what we learned from the IBM report is simply that um, Revel is able to go and look up data on the web or elsewhere, or maybe even information that they found while they were inside of your network that tells them a pretty good number of where your revenue's at and that the ransom demand is based on that revenue number. So. Revel asked anywhere from $1,500 all the way up to $42 million in ransom demands against U.S. businesses. That's a huge range, but Revel's in business to make money. Their profit was uh, estimated to be roughly about $81 million uh, uh, this year in 2020 um, that they've made so far from these ransomware attacks. And uh, you know, quite frankly, they can just go in, they can look at a company's uh, revenue level, look it up on Google, look it up on any of the business sites out there um, that either estimate or forecast what a company's revenue is, even private companies, and uh, they'll use that data to formulate what they should be asking for, knowing that you're probably going to come in and also negotiate that, probably try to negotiate that down. Um, but that is how they're doing this. They're, they're researching the companies they're targeting. They, they know the number that they're gonna come in at and then they deploy the ransomware and then they ask for that number. Um, and then we saw um, an, in, uh, an interesting um, uh, spike in a, a ransomware variant known as Snake or Ecans. Uh, Ecans is Snake backwards. Um, that was responsible for 6% of the attacks. Um, and that one was is actually targeted towards um, uh, uh, industrial control systems. So they're probably for more manufacturing and, um, uh, uh, and, and people who actually uh, use things in the industrial environment. It could be power plants or companies that supply power plants, things like that. The, they, this ransomware renders the machines that make manufacturers money useless. Um, so that was 6% of the attack, which is actually a, a pretty good amount when you're considering that you're looking at it across the board. Um, so that's you know a new threat to uh, uh, industrial controls here is uh, the snake ransomware. So um, when we look at the data all around, um, the top ransomware, uh, like I said, 30% of the attacks is Revel's uh, uh, Sodi no Kibi, uh, followed by the Maze ransomware attack, um, and then we have Snake, and then 53% is all others, all these other little variants of different things. Um, interestingly enough is that Maze and Sodi no Kibi uh, are ransomware as a service, meaning that there is a criminal group behind uh, the people who are actually t carrying out the attack. So the hackers or the people who run these organizations are, in a sense, a proxy for the ransomware. Somebody or the, the person carrying it out is a, is a proxy for the people who actually built it. Um, and they go out on the dark web, they offer the software for sale. Um, somebody in between your company and the hacking group is actually the one who delivers the ransomware to your organization. Um, and they are the ones who you would be working with along with the criminal hacking group to make this happen. So, um, you know, think of it this way. Um, instead of some, some person or some some kid or whatever you think in your head is going on out there think of it like this what if one day that one of your your employees was approached by somebody and they were asked to deploy this ransomware onto your network um you know that's 
absolutely a viable situation where somebody who maybe is in a position of a lot of debt or they just don't like working for your company but they still show up every day and then this opportunity comes across their desk and let's say they make you know fifty thousand dollars a year and somebody's offering them two hundred three hundred thousand dollars uh a payment to just plug this flash drive into your network um, and infect it these are the types of threats that we're seeing out there and this is how things can happen so it's very important that we you're aware of this stuff that's why we create these videos and understand that you know criminal hacking groups don't have to penetrate your network through the internet they can get there through other means um, and my example of an employee being compromised and plugging in a flash drive is absolutely a viable situation that could occur in your business and you need to be aware of it so um, ransomware attacks have been so profitable for cyber criminals that there's almost no chance of this threat to disappear anytime soon. Um, especially with Evolve Tactics uh, stealing data and leaking it or selling it on the dark web um, designed to force a ransom payment. So no matter what, even if you have good backups, um, you're going to have to still pay the ransom because there's always going to be that double extortion threat that I've mentioned before. Um, where a ransomware payment can be still demanded when they threaten to release the data that they stole uh, when they penetrated your network. Um, continuous backups, make sure that they're stored offline is still a good practice. That will help with recovery. It may not help with double extortion or ransomware payment, but it absolutely will help with the recovery time and, and how quickly it is from the event to when you're back up and running. Making sure that you're following best practices, you have a cybersecurity framework in place and applying security updates in a timely fashion while restricting or disabling ro remote access to the company's internal networks. These are all the things that you should be doing. Um, the VPN is becoming a a huge target, a huge favorite entry point for cyber criminals. They know that these businesses here in the US, because of COVID, they've opened up the doors for, for things like VPN. We get requests all the time from customers um, about adding or uh, instituting VPN. And there are risks with, with doing that. So you need to make sure that you just don't blindly open it up and don't configure it properly or monitor it or make sure that you're, you have controls in place so that if a, a bad actor tries to use that to get into your network, you have things in place that are preventing them from furthering an attack. Um, VPN is a very easy way if somebody can, can get connected to your network to deploy ransomware. Um, I would even go as far as saying if you're a smaller business, don't even consider using a VPN solution um, if you don't have the resources to properly maintain and monitor that service. Use a service like LogMeIn or another tool similar to that that will allow you the security and the two-factor authentication to access a device or computer on your work network without exposing your company to um, a threat or, or increasing the attack, attack surface, as we like to say, um, by opening up VPN to the internet and then allowing hackers to then use that to deploy malware, ransomware, what have you onto your network. So uh, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you did, please hit the like button. Just consider subscribing to our channel. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section down below. Uh, we would be happy to answer anything you might throw at us. And if you want to work with us in any way, shape or form, head over to my company's website. It's www.xitx.com. You can find out everything that we do there. Um, and if you'd like to reach out to us to work with us, there's plenty of forms and options for you to do that. And there's a lot of great eBooks on our website as well for you to download and educate yourself uh, a little bit more about cybersecurity. So have a great day, everyone. I will talk to you very soon. And remember, it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020.